These are the five things that you must know about the law of attraction. Now, something that I've come to see when it comes to this uh, space of the law of attraction or when it comes to the spiritual community is a misunderstanding of the law. Most people are seeing this as a tool, as something that you can turn off and on, something that you can use only when you want to benefit yourself. It's not really the case. As a matter of fact, that is completely contrary to what a law is. A law is something that is always on, that is always operating, that is always fundamental within the fabric of the universe that we live. That means it doesn't matter if it is something that you want or you do not want. You will and will continue to attract for the rest of your existence, at least in this lifetime. Now, let's get into the five things that you must know about the law of attraction. Number one is that you attract what you are, not what you want. So most people believe that if I want to attract something in my life, I must want something, right? Or maybe they say I must desire something. The desire is immediate. As soon as something happens in your experience, you don't even have to say what it is that you desire. If you see a broke down car, there's a desire sent out into the universe that says, I want a fixed car or I want a, a car in great condition. So we're always sending out desires. But most people fail to realize that what you actually are is what you attract. Now, when I said this one time, uh, there was a chick in my comment section who said, so does that mean if I want a, a rich man in my life, I got to be a rich man? No, I don't mean what you are physically. I don't mean what you look like. I mean what you are at your core, what you are energetically. If you are a fear-based individual, somebody who is fixated upon the emotion of fear, you will continue to attract experiences that are fear-inducing or fear-based. If you are somebody who is joyful, somebody who sees the world as abundant, somebody who sees the world as being trustworthy, you will continue to attract experiences and of course, material things that are in vibration or in resonance with that emotion or with that frequency, right? I'm not going to get too deep into the science right now, but I am going to give you at least enough for you to take notes and take home and to apply. So remember that the energy that you're giving off is what you're attracting. It's not just the words that you're saying or what you really, 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 really want. The law of attraction is not Santa Claus. Number two is... Who you are emotionally matters more than what you say, or the uh, emotions behind the words matter more than the words themselves. So most individuals have this belief that what I am saying is what I'm attracting. In some cases, that is true. In the cases where you actually have an alignment of emotion and words. So if I say something, if I say I'm a billionaire and I have an emotion that the world is abundant, that my life is abundant, that I am deserving, I have all these belief systems that back that word up and actually uh, give me a sensation or a feeling behind them, uh, them words, then that's what I'm going to attract. But if I say I am a millionaire and I believe the absolute opposite, that's what's going to be triggered. Right. So if we're getting into affirmations, which I'm not going to get too deep into now, but if we're going to talk about that, when we are affirming things, we want to find affirmations that we can actually believe that we resonate with. Right. And the more we repeat those to ourselves, the more we put ourselves in a good feeling state, then the easier and easier it will be to believe in, you know, greater and greater manifestations or greater and greater affirmations. Excuse me. Right. So, again, the words that you say are not necessarily what matters because the universe doesn't speak language. It doesn't speak Mandarin. It doesn't speak French. It doesn't speak English. I hate to break it to you. It does speak frequency. It does speak emotion, which is energy in motion. So focus on the emotion and not on the words. Number three is there is no law of exclusion. Now, Abraham Hicks is one of the best teachers around this space, right? She's the one who put me on game when I really got into the space at first. And what she essentially explained is that you do not say, like, let's say, I don't want to get sick, right? Or I don't want to be poor. The law of attraction is only picking up, again, the energy that you're emitting. So when most people are saying they don't want something, they're focused upon the energy of not having that thing, or they're focused upon the fear base as opposed to the hope base, as opposed to the belief base, right? So when somebody says they don't want to be sick, they don't want to be sick, what is the image in their head? It is most likely of sickness. When somebody says, I don't want to be poor, I don't want to be poor, what pops up in their head? It's mostly 
of them in poverty or in some type of uh, poverty imaging is coming up in their head, right? Maybe somebody living under a bridge or somebody begging and having to sign up or hunger or whatever it may look like. So therefore, since the law has no exclusion and it only picks up what we do desire, it is of our best interest to only focus upon the things that we desire. That is it. Don't make it any more complicated, right? But please, for the love of yourself and your own life, stop yourself from speaking and focusing upon the things that you do not desire. I promise you, it is not going to get you anywhere. And I see more people than not doing this. And I used to do this before I was completely aware of what it was doing to me. Now, number four is you attract what you hate and you attract what you judge, you attract what you resent just as much as you attract what you love or what you believe in, right? What you have hope in. Now, many people find this to be um, a more difficult one to accept because we love to hold on to these negative emotions, right? We're addicted to the negative emotions in most cases. Why? Because we're used to them, because they are comfortable. Therefore, if resentment is comfortable for you, right? If judgment of self and others is comfortable for you, you would rather stay there than actually change that behavior from the inside out. Therefore, people continue to attract from a place of what they're holding on to. So if I am judgmental, I am going to attract judgmental people into my experience, right? I'm going to attract more of those things that I'm judging myself upon. So if I judge myself upon not looking good enough, I'm always going to see myself in a perspective where I'm not good enough, but I'm also going to get experiences that are going to validate or justify those belief systems. If I'm somebody who hates people or who has hatred uh, towards specific individuals, I'm attracting from a state of hatred. So just imagine the experiences that I'm going to bring into my situation. This is why sometimes people say, you know, why do bad things happen to good people, et cetera, et cetera. You don't know what's going on in somebody's heart. You don't know if that person who's got a smile on their face all the time, who's always appeasing to everybody, actually has deep resentment and hatred, has bitterness towards themselves and others. Sometimes it is just they, they're holding on to such a deep guilt complex that they continue to attract situations and circumstances in their life that aligns with that guilt complex. Number five is, who number five? Oh, number five. Number five is, the law of attraction is indifferent. So when we talk about God, when we talk about source, the universe, we must first understand that it is loving. It is uh, benevolent is the word, right? Which means it is all loving. It only wants the best, essentially, for itself or for us, you know, for all, because it is all and it is nothing. That's a little complex. I'm not going to get too deep into that, but what I do want to touch upon is this. It is also indifferent, which does not mean it does not care. It actually cares absolutely. It cares about every finite detail, the details we couldn't comprehend the law cares about, right? The Lord cares about. Law and Lord are actually interchangeable words. That's for another time. So this is important to understand because some people think to themselves, why would these bad things happen? The law must be evil or why are these bad things happening? You know, God must not care about me. The source of the universe is untrustworthy when in fact it is ourselves who are creating these situations, these circumstances out of our own belief systems, out of the emotions and the thoughts, the images or the imagination that we hold on to. We are the ones who are projecting our own selves into the world and then judging it according to what we then see as circumstance. And what most individuals do not come to realize is that the law is going to work regardless. The law is going to work regardless. Whether you are somebody who is absolutely self-deprecating, if you're somebody who shits on themselves all the time, or if you're somebody who is always loving on yourself, always seeing the best for yourself. I'll give you a great example. There was um, an example which uh, Abraham Hicks gave of you know, a woman who had come into one of the seminars and she said, man, I got this friend and she's always working so hard. She's always working so hard and barely able to make ends meet. But she used to take care of her boyfriend and her boyfriend had everything done for him and he didn't have a job and he didn't do nothing, but he always was taken care of. And basically this couple eventually broke up. The woman was in the exact same situation, always toiling, working hard, struggling. 
And as soon as they got out the relationship, her boyfriend, who was doing nothing during that relationship, ended up getting, uh, I believe, some money from a relative who had passed. And I believe it was around a million, a million five or something like that, right? But it was more than a million dollars that they received as soon as they broke up. And basically, the woman who was explaining the story said that her best friend was screwed. And how is the universe, you know, kind of benevolent or loving? Well... Abraham Hicks said to this woman, you know, that man must have had a belief system that he's always taken care of, whereas her friend obviously had the opposite, where life has to be a struggle, where people take advantage of her, etc., right? So again, it is indifferent. If you hold on to a belief that I'm always taken care of, whatever that looks like, that's how life is going to meet you. If you believe that life is supposed to be a struggle, you could look like the good person on the surface, right? You could look like the person who's so caring and altruistic, but if you're holding on to resentment and bitterness and have a belief that people take advantage and you know you never get yours, etc., that is exactly what you will continue to perpetuate as your physical experience. So... Um, I'm just going to run over these real fast one more time, and then we are going to wrap up today's session. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you got value from this. And um, I actually got a few products out, some of it being uh, this merch right here. So if you want to support, I'll make sure to leave a link in the description of this video. Uh, we also have courses out, etc. I just put out a journal for those who are in their self-love journey, so we'll get into that. But first, I want to brush over these. So the five are, number one, you attract what you are, not what you want. Number two is, the words are not as important as the emotions, unless the emotions and the words link or are uh, resonant. Number three is, there is no law of exclusion. There is no, I do not want. Number four is, you can attract or you do attract what you hate, what you judge, what you resent, just as much as what you desire and what you love. Number four is... Oh, that was number four. And number five is, da -da ding the law is indifferent. You can use it for good or for bad, for your own good or for your own uh, destruction, for your own empowerment or for your own disempowerment. Now, like I said before, I'm going to leave a few links in the uh, description below to make sure that you guys have access to resources that I and the team will continuously be putting out to you. I appreciate you for your time. Much love. Peace. Namaste and namas go.